Okay, welcome back. This is part three of the lecture on advanced topics in color. Um, that's part of unit nine. Um, and so in this lecture so far, we've been um, we've covered the issue of ambient color and how the main point to get from ambient or discussion of ambient color is that the colors that we actually see are much more complicated than we think they are and that they're affected by all the different kinds of things going on like the change of light and the changes of, of atmosphere, and that artists need to train themselves to see color in the actual world, to see color accurately, um, that learning to paint is a lot about learning how to see color accurately. And the next thing we talked about was some more advanced understandings about the color wheel. And then now we're talking about uh, color relativity. And so the main point of color relativity is the idea that when you make a, a mark of a certain color and you put it down in a painting, that mark will look quite different depending on where in the painting you put it. If you put it in a light area, that mark might look a lot darker. If you put it in a dark area, that mark might look a lot lighter. If you put it in a warm area, that color might look a lot cooler, right? And it has to do with the basic principle that we, when we look at stuff like comparing colors, we see them relatively. We see them in comparison the things around. And in these Joseph Albers paintings, you can see that principle at work in a really subtle way. But notice how when you're looking at this painting, you get this kind of edge right there, where this color, this internal color, seems to be getting a little, maybe a little bit darker and a little bit cooler, right? Um, it seems to be shifting in value and in color, and, and it's in relation to that color. Whereas as it goes closer to this color, which is a, a richer, more intense color, but also a slightly darker color, it starts to look lighter and lighter and more cool, um, kind of a, a pale sort of color. We can see the same thing in much more subtle ways in this painting, but it's very especially true here in that homage to square painting. And the principle of work here is the fact that when we, when we see colors, we see them in context. This is a little Photoshop demo that I made for my students a while back in the color theory class to demonstrate this principle that basically taking the same pairing of colors right and then making um, some variations on those colors right there and there and then taking those colors and those variations of colors and placing them in these different contexts right from here right to there and so these colors here are the same color as those, like internally, the inside colors are the same colors. This is the same as that, and this is the same as that. But they don't look exactly the same. They look, um, in the case of these two, completely different because the colors around them have changed. So color relativity is an important uh, scientific principle, um, and part of that is what we call optical um, resonances and um, simultaneous contrast, which is the effect of where if you're, if you're looking at one color for a really long time and then you close your eyes, you're going to, your eyes are going to see like the opposite pattern in opposite colors. Like if you stare at, um, at a, like a, a version of the American flag and bright uh, magenta and, um, and like chartreuse yellow, you know, or green, and you stare at that and then you close your eyes, you're going to see the reverse um, because your eye, basically all the, all the cones, all the rods, you know, the cones um, in your eyes receiving the color, they are geared towards when they get really, really um, overstimulated one color, they start looking really hard for the opposite colors. And so your, your kind of the, your brain flips it or your eye flips it. Anyway, optical mixing is another effect. Uh, we talked about that a little bit in the art historical lecture, which was the attempt by artists to make colors by having just small points of color work together so that, you know, to create a blue violet or a violet by combining reds and blue, but not mixing them, just putting dots of blue and dots of red together, or to create a green just out of dots of yellow and dots of blue. Um, and Seurat you know, tried this kind of effect and, oh, I still got some time, 
But later artists like uh, Richard uh, Aniskovich, who just died this year, by the way, um, it's a real shame. He um, came up with these much more exciting and interesting kind of arrangements of optical mixing. So the thing to remember is that the base color is this color always, right? That that always stays the exact same color, but it seems to constantly be shifting, right? Because of the other colors changing in, in color. And so we get like these fields of these different arrangements of color, but everything is really that underneath. And he does the same kind of thing with this illusion as well. Um, some artists have discovered over time that like really the best kind of optical mixing effects occur if you're working with really, really light pale colors on a, on a light pale um, kind of ground, that these kind of like pale, slightly gray um, grounds work best in terms of like that bleeding effect so that you start to see the, the different colors kind of mixing by eye. Um, and Arthur Honer probably is the true master of optical mixing where like he's creating that kind of field of yellow even though there's no yellow there. The field of yellow is made just out of out of pinks and greens um, but they together they combine to create the illusion that the whole area is is kind of uh, got this yellow bleed to it. All right and that's where we're gonna end. Um, hopefully with this lecture and the kind of advanced topics of color it'll help you to see some of the artwork that we've already seen in class a little bit more um, with a little bit more intensity, like this Ellsworth Kelly here, you can really now see that the, the specificity of these color decisions um, is very, very much based on a very intense understanding of the scientific theories as well as, as artistic practices of color. All right, that's where we're going to end. Thank you very much.